right, call him. Call him to you. He did nip your friend. Hey, what's going on guys? Tom Davis here, America's Canine Educator. I am here at the Upstate Canine Academy and do I have a video for you guys today. We have a young German Shepherd coming in with severe leash reactivity. As you guys see in the title, he does come after me a couple times, but he's coming after me out of fear. He's coming after me out of insecurity. His reactivity stems from being fearful. And I know that doesn't make a lot of sense for some people out there and dog owners struggle with trying to figure out why their dog seems aggressive, but actually stemming from fear is something that happens often. And on today's episode, you guys, I'm gonna walk the dog owners through exactly how this behavior is created, why their dog is insecure and nervous. Hope you guys enjoy this video. I appreciate you guys watching. If you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button, smash that like button, you guys. We put videos out like this every single week. The No Bad Dog Army is getting so strong. I appreciate you guys watching. Let's get into the video. So, it seems to me that he's, obviously he's reactive. He's very defensive and nervous. <laughs> The reactivity is one piece, but we want to work on the uh, the relationship too. So like, see how when we ask him to do stuff, he just doesn't do it. Yeah. Yeah. You're like, sit, no, leave it, nope. nope. <laughs> so those are the things that we're going to work on. But the reason why the reactivity is happening is because of those things. Yeah. So it's just like parenting, if you will, that if you say, go clean up your room and they're like, nope, yeah. that's going to bubble up everywhere. Doing some changes to help him get more confident around new people and new situations. So I, I just want to take the leash. Thank you. And then you can just let go. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to work him around the room a little bit. When you deal with a dog like this, I can tell very clearly, and most people who train dogs probably can, that even if it was a very friendly bark, it's still a bark. But I'm not even really concerned about the bark. I'm more concerned about how big he is and how much he doesn't listen to you. Bark is an outcome of that relationship that you guys have with him, of the lack of respect and discipline. And when you say something, it's in one in ear and out the other. You also notice that he's going to be probably less reactive to me with me to other people because he doesn't feel the need to defend anything. So I'm just gonna work him just a little bit. I feel comfortable petting him because I, I think he's a sweet dog. Underneath he just, he's reactive. So he's alerting. Now if he was a four pound chihuahua, this would be cute, <laughs> right? Yeah, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pull this up just a little bit. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna work on some engagement with him just to get him working with me. So I have his uh, treats in my pocket here. With him and with any dog, really, they crave structure, discipline, consistency, not flakiness, not, hey, do this for fun. Hey, do this because it's cute. Hey, paw my hand, whatever. They, they need structure to survive and be mentally healthy, okay? He's going to always be anxious if he doesn't have somebody telling him what to do and how to do it. He's not a couch dog. He's a very active, young, powerful shepherd and he needs a job. Sit. Good sit. Good sit, big man. Very sweet boy. That's why we were so shocked when he did that because I was like, he's never acted like that ever. Yeah, but also too, he's never been at that age ever. He's hitting that peak two-year-old, intact, somebody coming into the house. I'm not saying it's appropriate, but what I'm saying is, is you have to like take things in the context of he's never done it because he's never been a mature dog at two years old, you know? A lot of people say that as like, all of a sudden my dog, how old's your dog? Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 months or... <laughs> All right, call him. call him to you. The reason why he's reacting the way that he is, is he wanted to go to you because you're on the phone. I'm like, no, let's come to me. And he's like freaking out and he's barking. Is he pissed off? And then he's pissed off at me because I wouldn't let him go. And then he's coming at me because, so all that stuff is, you know, like unhealthy for him to think that that's something that he can and should be doing. So, but that's why you're here. We're going to be working on that. So your relationship with him is going to make things more dangerous than anything because it's not really him. It's how he feels around you. He does. There's no doubt. 100%. There's not even a question. We kind of like, I mean, we want him yeah. to protect her. Did he we know want that? him to know the difference. Your obedience and your off switch comes in. I had a client online the other day. You know, she was saying that somebody broke into the house while she was home and she had a beagle. 
And the beagle was snarling and going nuts. And like the beagle knew that that was happening. The yeah. dog knew that that was happening. But my point is, is there's a significant difference between your dog doesn't have the perception of who's breaking in the house and who's coming in to say hello because it's your family. Right. He doesn't have that off switch. He just feels like everybody around you has to be bad or he, he's got to protect you from. I've watched your videos and I'm like, if he's got to, like we need to teach him how to know mm -hmm. that it's okay. Yeah. And we have been very unsuccessful. Well, you, you have to know how to do it uh, in order for it to be successful too. And, and I would recommend it just, it's going to come from you. If you come in here and he decides to bark at everybody and you just let him, right. that would encourage him to do that. But if you turn and you say, hey, leave it. And he's like, oh, okay. You sure? Yeah, I'm sure. Thank you. So it's not really necessarily teaching him who's good and who's bad. You know, their intentions and their intuition will tell them that. I mean, if you're screaming bloody murder, somebody comes to your house, he's going to know that. Yeah. So, so I think the most important thing is, is your dog is always going to want to protect you and to be, you know, a shepherd and to have this guardianship in him. And your job is to, like you said, like if somebody walks by the house or somebody comes up to the car, we don't necessarily want to completely suppress that to a point where he's like, Oh, I can't bark. It's right. it's really about you barking and then you being able to shut it down. Right. Thank you very much. That's really what it's about. I want to focus on you guys handling him. Let's start just doing a little bit more directional changes. Right now you're in a big oval. So you're doing the whole room. Just do a little bit more directional changes to get him on you. And then what I would start doing is as soon as you ask him to sit and he doesn't, that's when you give him pressure. Because if you tell him to sit three or four, five, six, seven, eight times, then that's what it becomes. I mean, think about it, how much that bubbles up. Hey, do this. And he's like, no. And you're like, I'm just, I'm just gonna ask you again anyway. And he knows that. So don't ask him unless you're ready to, to follow up with it. So let's heal him again. Is that you? Good, now turn again. And just keep kind of switching up things. And you can go slow if you want. You don't have to cruise. You're just trying to just keep him on you. That's better. There you go. So stop for a second. Good. So two things. There, good. good. Cool. There you go. So two things is like when you're when you're working him, try to only give him information that he understands so you don't want to talk to him too much because he's trying to decipher keywords, right? One word, one thing, heal, sit, leave it, break. Don't put any pressure on him when you ask him to do stuff. So when we heal, we just say, Max, heal, and you just move forward. So don't get a habit of putting any pressure on that collar okay. unless he's doing something that we don't like him doing or he's, he's barking or he's doing something that's ruining our lives, you know? There you go. That's good. That looks really good. He loves you. That's really great. He's very encouraged to work with you. So this is good. Now just slow down a little bit and stop and then ask him to sit. Perfect. Much better. Much better. He even auto sat there. He's like, oh, boop. good. I kind of put it on as like it's a project, right? He comes in, he's got all these loose ends. He's got this pile of paperwork you got to do. He's like all over the place. And you just have to do in your training, you just start just let, peeling off layers until you can boop, 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 get down to like the core of like, okay, we're just about getting all this junk out of there. We're just removing all the junk. So with him, you just want clarity. Like he wants structure. He wakes up, he's like, what do you want me to do? How do you want me to do it? How fast do you want me to do it? And that's what he needs. So he needs consistency. He needs discipline. He needs structure. Do this, now do this, now do this, now break. And just to make him more confident. When he does anything that you don't like, we're trying to discourage that behavior somehow. Like that's what we do as parents, right? With him. Same thing with kids too. Right when he does it, that's when we're discouraging it because we don't want it to happen. So it's the same exact principles of reward-based systems on the other end of the spectrum. When the dog does something we want, we try to encourage it by doing positive reinforcement. So when he sits, same thing I was doing earlier, good sit. I'm encouraging like that, that's wonderful, great job. But we also have that balance of when he decides to just all black 100 pounds, whatever, how much he weighs, all black German Shepherd goes flying after the leash to bark at the other trainer and we're just like silent. That's enabling him to make him think that that's okay. You're sitting there having a conversation, all of a sudden your kid just kicks the person you're talking to. You're not gonna just <laughs> act like it never happened. You're gonna say, um. He does that actually. I've recently he, ki he kicks people? No, I'm no. just kidding. <laughs> when he is healing about and he's doing good, good heal. Okay. Yep, you gotta make sure that we're, we're telling him what he's doing is good. Cause right now you're probably in fix it mode. You're just waiting him for, to make a mistake cause you're in training. Most of training and what we do here is rewarding positively. Like, hey, jo good job, man. This is good. Stick this in the mud. Let it sit. This is what I want you to do. So just remember and be mindful that when he is doing well and he is looking at you and he's turning on a dime with you, good heal. Let him know. Yeah, man, that's good.